So this is the second Maimer. The Rebbe said in connection with the Stalkas of the Alter Rebbe, 150 years, Shnaz Hakan. The first was Mitzray Shabbos, at the time of the Stalkas, and the next Fabrenya was the next night. And here again, he says, a Maimer, This basically is word for word the Al Terebis Maimer. Hmm. Very short. And not even commentary. He just says at the end, if you look at footnote eight after the Maimer that I've said, that this Maimer is also of the memorandum of the Al Terebis that have not been printed as of yet. They subsequently were. And it appears that I've continues, it's from the first years when the Maimarim were very brief. They got longer, as we all know, after it is Kislev. They have added, even though, they're very brief, but added, even though they incorporate many in Yonim and Heirois and lessons in Avoida, which were then uh, detailed in details and in, in many details in the Maimarim which came afterwards. But that it could mean the Al Rebbe himself and the Rebbeim that followed as well. Okay, so we'll learn the Maimer and then we'll devote the time to the, the story, which is a, a longer story. Kamas doinag mipnei eish is the posik. Like wax melts before fire. <clears throat> so, too, the posik goes on to say, your enemies will uh, dissipate before you. The Khair in Imbuv and Astal Terebe would appear not understood. Why does he invoke the metaphor of wax before fire? And not the consumption of wood before fire. And the like. What's the difference? It's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. The difference is that the wax... In the metaphor of the wax melting, it remains. But in the metaphor of the fire, of the wood being consumed, so the, the uh, wood is completely consumed. So the chayre, that would be a better motion for the utter uh, consumption, the utter destruction of the enemies of Hashem. So why talk about melted wax? In Achina Yedua, but it's known by British Pasuk Zer in the meaning of this Pasuk. So there is, this was capital Samaches, in capital Tzadik Beis, the Pasuk says that by doing good, the Mela automatically is Pordo Kolpele Oven. Is Pordo means literally. Come apart, completely oven. All those who do oven means violence, a strong sin. In other words, that this pasuk is saying that the way that evil is eradicated is by increasing good, which is not what's being conveyed in the first pasuk necessarily. So, what's the difference? Yafalpisha say that who. Even though the say that I've in general is should sort of at least mira. First, you have to turn away from evil or destroy it. But here the post that we just quoted is Pordu. Oven. So there it's talking about an increase in good that automatically causes Ra to be nullified. Not by engaging Ra. And it's not the Aveda of Iskafia. Not even Isabcha. But the Aveda of Kedusha. So what's the Aveda? We see in these two psukim that one is Kamas Den Mipnayesh. You're dealing directly with the with Klippa and melting it. And the other one is describing an Aveda of Asias, of Asay Toiv, and automatically is part of Kopeli of it. So the explanation is 
even though he says again, the usual say it is outlined in the Pasuk is Sur Miran Dena Seitoiv. How do you do a Shesh Beis Minira? So what is appropriate when? Answer, there's two kinds of Ra. Yesh ne Ra Sha Isur Minatayra Medivri Safrim. So there is a Ra, which is what? Which is prohibitions, the Torah prohibits, or the Chachamim prohibited. The Aveda now is stop doing that. That's the first thing. Turn away from evil, and that's the outset. Don't do the Aveda. We're talking about a Maise Bepeil. A Maise Bepeil, either Midiraisa or Midirabona. And it's not that we tell the person they just do mitzvahs. Aveda Satfila. First, you got to stop sinning. Commercial coast, like the Pesach says, Ularosha or Martin to the wicked, Hashem says, doesn't continue the Pesach, but Hashem says, why are you relating my Torah? How dare you say my words of Torah full of sin? First divest yourself of Avedis, Malachol Asapen Chukai, that you're relating my statutes. First you divest yourself, you stop sinning, and then you approach the holy. Poshet, you can't approach the holy with sullied garments. It's an insult to approach the king. Sullied and dirtied and foul smelling. So first you've got to take a bath. Like Yosef, before he was taken to the Melech, they cleaned him up and then they brought him to the Melech, which is, of course, emotional. Pari is emotional or when incarnate of his period in the highest madregas of Alikus. That's the regular Seder. And that regular Seder affects what? In Yonim of Pel Mamish. Mashink in Hara. Was another kind of ra. She'enel a bit teva hamidos. We're not talking about the ra that is in behavior, but his personality. To quote, uh, <clears throat> to quote, the uh, Moshe Polt Oliver Shalom. You know, his wife just passed away yesterday. His yard site is on my birthday. I can't, I can't forget his yard site. Beishvat. I forgot the exact context, but the bottom line was uh, something about your rotten personality. Oh, I remember it was. That after Mashka, some of the talks talking to me, that it's good because it improves, improves an improvement on your rotten personality. <laughs> and this was a phrase that he would say, apparently. I, I thought it was only to me, so I was very... Uh, uh, Complimented that I got such such attention. Apparently, it's, it's a it's a catch line of his, but I'm sure he used it very sparingly and only where it was appropriate. So when we're talking about a rotten personality, which everybody has to one degree or another, but he doesn't act upon it. No, the loy baladei maise, but he doesn't give expression to it. He's in control of his behavior. We're talking the abandoning. He's inclined towards all kinds of terrible things. But he exercises self-control. So, so such a person, we don't say, you've got to change your personality before you start being involved in a seitoi. We don't say that. It's not such a, in the words of al Tareb, it's not, it's not such a big impediment to embarking on the avoid of a seitoi. It means avoid the satfila, the avoid of kedusha. The other, on the contrary, such a person, we say, and you immerse yourself in chsidus and in, in, in asay toiv, and then the peli oven, which means in, in the midas in the heart, as he explains it, will be uh, be softened and dissipate. As the Rebbe once told the Bokha that he should. So the Bokha that wrote in this was after the. And the Rebbe had spoken about the Gzeda of taking Mashka, especially it applies to Bochrim. So he said, he, he can't fabreng, he can't, he can't, uh, he can't move his heart without Mashka, which is supposed to do. He was a very Gzedish Bochrim, this boy, and a big fabrenger. Not a boy anymore. So the Rebbe told him he should become intoxicated in Gzedas. You should learn and learn, drink a lot. He has to have a lot of mashka, so a lot of chassidus. Drown yourself in chassidus. That's kind of the nekudah here. 
So for that taka, that's the eight. When we're not talking about mice of pearl, we're talking about self-refinement. So here the answer is immerse yourself in Kedusha. So that's the answer to the question whether the Aveda has to be sur meiram, then I say toiv, or the Aveda should be primarily emphasizing Kedusha, I say toiv. Depends. If the person's beyond already, Maisa Bepoel, so then, and he's dealing with his midness, his personality, Gaiva, etc. So then the answer is increase in light, and the mainly is part of the Kepoel of it. The Pasek Surmira is talking about Ascholah Savoida, where it has to be Surmira. Arguably, arguably, I'm not taking a full Achrayis on this because I need Mekiris, but arguably it could be said that Deir Ashvi, Deir Ashvi, even, even at the ground zero level, the emphasis is Asay Toiv. Certainly in Mekad of a year, you don't, you don't uh, tell him stop being Mechal Shabbos. It's not, it's not the first step. It's you invite him to your home to make Kiddush. So even our even our generation is holding. I mean, you could argue because it's the downside, but it's the upside. Uh, with the avoid of say toiv lachatchila, even in my sabbatayim, and that's because we could suggest that's because sins today are not what they used to be. Once upon a time, a sin was a person knew, and he's uh, he's decided he's just not he's doing contrary to Hashem's will. And that's a terrible thing. So stop doing that before you can talk about a relationship. When you're deliberately, you're deliberately, it's like in a relationship. A husband is deliberately insulting and hurting his wife. And what's he's going to continue insulting? But he's going to buy a nice present for her, for her, for her birthday. That's an insult. And he's going to give the present with an insult. That's an inappropriate. So first stop insulting. And then you're talking about giving a present. That's how it used to be in the past because people knew and a sin was a real sin. Today, sins aren't sins. It's just ignorance. And it's just uh, boredom or ignorance, mainly ignorance. We don't really realize and understand. So since the sins today are not what they used to be, the Rebbe is saying that our generation is holding, I say toif, just good, from the get-go. There's a taishan of Hashem on the Pasuk, simple meaning is, it's, it's an instruction. Surmira, turn from evil. Then I say toif. Hashem says toif. Surmira, forget about the evil. I say toif, do good. Second boss of the Gani. The second boss of the Gani. Amen Gimel. Amen Gimel. He'd be from the Shem of Hashem to this toif. Okay. Um, that's our generation. So let's continue. So we spoke about two levels of Ra, behavioral and more uh, the nature of the person. So two, there are two levels of love. Simple translation, great love or eternal love. However, the meaning is as follows. Avas Eilom. So literally, a love of the world. What's Avas Eilom? Here, Avas Shabo, Yidei HaIzbonnos, Begdolose, Yizborech, Bebriyas Eilom. There is a love that's engendered, an appreciation for godliness, for Hashem, that comes as a result of what? Of, being medit of meditating and reflecting the creation, the awesomeness of creation. Creation Gashmi, creation Ruchni, including the Malachim. And this all points to the, the, the splendor and the divine intelligence and the beauty and the, the mightiness, the awesomeness, the tenderness, all of these components that exist in nature. There is fury and there is tenderness and the whole gamut of all possible expression in the most incredible way. So this engenders a love for the creator. So that's Avas Eilom. So he's connecting to what? The Avarab, or great love, so Rabbi implies beyond libet. This really is a love that's not engendered by Seichel, not because, not because he sees and appreciates Hashem's handiwork. 
but he's connecting to a level of Alekus that's beyond Seich HaBalishom, he's Bonanus, he's hiding his Bonanus. So how does he arrive at it? He'll say, it's, if it's beyond meditation, how do you access this Avarab? Let's continue. Vini mitzad avas oilom, the lower level of love, the love of the of world, of the love of the way he sees God invested in the oilom and the world in creation. Shem is burning and big the loss sees but it would be a reflects into the great the greatness of Hashem as in expressed in his creation, his creativity. So this engenders what level of relationship? Nikra oive delikim. He's a servant of God. But what level? Elikim, as Hashem is invested in creation. He's is connected to the Abish and creation. This is godliness in the world. What this means is that he's serving God because it is beautiful and fulfilling. And he relates to it. And it's a meaningful life. And it's a wonderful life, Yiddish guy. This world, the next world. And if the love is on this level, which basically is how wonderful Yiddish guy Tinalikus is. So, what, how does this pearl on the Ra, Nasir, I think that's going to answer the original question, like wax melts before fire? The Ra, the Yeshis, isn't going to disappear. On the contrary, this whole love is, is I love. I see the beauty, I appreciate it. It's fulfilling. He just writes a beautiful life. There's no, 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 no life like it. It just works. So obviously the Ra, which means the Yeshis, doesn't disappear. It just doesn't resist. It melts. Just like wax, which at the outset was hard, and the fire causes it to become soft. And you can change the shape then as one desires. So till now, before these bonnets, as it were, he was directed towards what? Materialism, Gashmias. Now he's come to realize that the real Gashmak and the real beauty and the real meaningful life is a life of Yiddishkeit. So he's redirected, reformed that. And he is now an Afrumayid, but the same yes. It's the same, uh, it's all about me. But he's come to realize that wh where's true fulfillment and where's beauty is a life of Torah mitzvahs. So hasn't this, the yes just hasn't disappeared. So Vachain, who about Vaid, says likewise in Avaid, using the metaphor of the, of the, of the, of the melted wax. Through a relationship which is all about the world, all about me, seeing godliness in creation and appreciating that. So what will be? The yesh is the ra, which was originally hard and therefore resistant and sinful. Now it's become soft and pliable. The koifai, it can be subjugated. It says a person wants. The Rab, which is still there, essentially in his emotional makeup, which is selfish, he's not going to express that in a destructive way. But his Dara is not completely nullified. Again, the whole foundation here is, at the end of the day, the self is an over the Likim, is an Evid, but he's, he's serving for reward. And reward is all kinds of levels of reward, the sense of fulfillment and purpose and so on. So what's the level he achieves? Like like uh, like wax that melts but still remains. However, the tachlis is to come to this great love which is beyond self, which is I love you because not what you do, how you make me feel. But I love you because of you. Which is high in the love of the world, the worldly love. I love you means in the world, I love the way you make me feel, which is why I'm devoted to you. So this BM is this level of love, which is beyond gain, which is the altruistic love because of you. 
שיש להם בכל אחד ויחד באמס, every yid has this, here's the paradox. The level of avas oilam, you're not born with that. We're born liking materialism and gashmias and physical <laughs> sensual fulfillment, and that's the end of the story. So you have to use your seichel, be misbeinen, and realize, don't be a behemoth, but be a higher form of behemoth, and recognize that a true meaningful life is a life of morality and Yiddishkeit and so on. If you don't be misbein, then you don't have it. The paradox is that the Ava Rabba, everybody does that. But what is concealed? El why? Because everybody has a neshama, and the neshama is a chilek, lakam yimal mamish. And at the core, the core of a yid, he is one with the Abish, and therefore selfless. But this greater love is a hidden love. Just occurred to me, I don't know if it says this anywhere or not, but we're born. What's, how is a child born? What's the first, what's the first behavior of the child is? This wail, this gewalt. Could be that some it is true that I mean the chetzoni is I'm cold whatever it is it is coming from the warm womb and provided for now what's this glaring lights and people and and cold and but the pnimi is it is the whale of gival and gishring thrust me down here <coughs> Rabbi, I want you it's that cry we need to reveal and live with. So here we have to be pale that this great love, which is the longing that a yid has for the Yavish, that is similar to the previous Maimed. This is the Chaylas Ava. Love sick. And why sick? As we explained yesterday, because in the strong words of the Altar Rebbe, the person is Nimas Bechayev. For heaven's sakes, God. Can I can you take me out of me and just you? So we have to be pale that this should be, and as the Rebbe said yesterday in the Maimer, this isn't a guilt thing. As the Pasha, the Bishat and the Gemara, should be bekir because you're worried about your failures. It's a recognition that they wish to made me this way. Why? Because he wants the longing. And that's the Avarab he speaks of here. So the Avoid is that the Avarab the Zotia Bizgalos. That we should reveal this, the chelus ava. We said ava rabbi zunas arabot legamri. Obviously, when when this great love is revealed, this the yichidus shebenefesh. This is the soul essence bemis, which is only tapped into in the ilam has. So then the ras can be nullified. The ra meaning the ego, the self. It just says no. It's an embarrassment and has no place. It's about you. Like the Apostle says, Behold your enemies, O God. Dikas Havaya, and not Shemalikim. Havai is the Avarabba, the transcendent. Not as Hashem is invested in creation, but as Hashem is in his truth beyond creator. Then you have the Yispardo called Pele of it. Then naturally, all the violence and, and, and evil is just naturally just falls apart, collapses in the face of what? Of the emes, the true emes. This is kine evech havayin. And he connects to the to beyond creator, beyond the fulfilling life of Yiddishkeit. But rather because of the absolute truth of the Likus, which is higher than the way Hashem is invested himself to be created, higher than he's invested in creation, then Nasa Yevedu Oivecha Legamri, that's like the completely transformation of evil, Leira Kamas Denipanis, not just like the wax melts, the die, the maven, and this suffices to the discerning. As the Rebbe said after the Maimer, very uh, but in this Maimer is contained tremendous heroes and lessons, which I think a little bit we are getting. So, what's the, the lesson for us here? And especially since we're Deir Ashvin, as we said before, the Deir Ashvin, Lechatchil, as I say, Taib. So, the embassy is the Chura, that the Deir Ashvin, we're all crying out. 
We're all crying out. Uh, our generation is a generation that has experienced everything from every extreme. Being there, done there, not just seen it all, but experienced it all. And the cry continues because the cry is not more, not give me more, but you, you alone. That's our generation. So our generation, Bemis, is, is, is the stirrings and the longing and the yearning is the Avarabha. The emesis, it is, I mean, till, till it's aligned and expressed, it's terribly distorted. It just, yesterday a conversation was somewhat very sad, but I'm not going to mention the names, but uh, obviously, or even what the institution is, because this is meetings behind closed doors, but nonetheless, the bottom line is this whole new woke uh, liberal culture. So they want they want to bring to the children at very elementary levels uh, to encourage, allow for, and encourage the I don't know what you call it the the gen across gender, but the boy, a girl, a girl, a boy. They were talking about children, little kids, little kids like feeding into this. Yeah, yeah, you're. So this is a terrible uh, distortion, but really it's coming from a very, it's a, it, it's a corruption of a very deep pre-Mashiach truth, which is what we're talking about right here. This is the Avarab, because Be'emes is, what, what's it say? What's this whole world culture say? There's no hardcore definition. There's not a hardcore definition. Seer. It could be a boy, it could be a male, a female, or an it, or a they, whatever. So on the surface, Externally, it's crazy, a terrible corruption. But the primis of it is Ed of Mashiach, yes. The, it's as high as Avarab, as high as Nishtalshalus, high as Seer. This is connected to a transcendent oneness where we are all fundamentally one. What's missing here? <laughs> that oneness has to pervade multiplicity and division and Gvul. It's the Hebrew of Bli Gvul and Gvul. But it's the, I'm saying that the stirring is the longing, the yearning. It's all, this is our generation. It's our generation is, man, ish vidich alein. Rebbe would cry, not Rebbe would say. I don't want you to go, I don't want you to go, but you alone, we're all is equal. All is equal. There is no limitation, no boundary. In Achlifu Duchtayo says in Kabbalah, that Eir HaChesed can be in Kli HaGvur, and Eir HaGvur can be in Kli HaChesed. This interchange of identity, chesed, bivura. But pnimis is the highest madrege of oneness. But the whole point is it has to pervade and embrace the protein. So this is not to be dismissed, but to be embraced and enlightened. That's where it's coming from. That's our generation, Avarab. How does this fit with Tanya's in the topics of Tanya's in these topics of Vedas? Because the comes from his body and if you can't reach that, then they, they fall back on the other misdemeanors. And this, it seems like there's a Abba Rabba, he says, is the other misdemeanors. So it's the same because what's the Abba misdemeanors of Tanya, misdemeanors nefesh? Misdemeanors nefesh without gain, not in order to even get Elam Haba. So you just that uh, was telling, remember, you've got this. When you and you would be put to the to the crunch, you would give up your life. So resist this Aveda now, not because of Schar and Einish, but because you're a year that's. Al Tab is giving us the tools there how to how, and these bondedness to connect Taka to this Avara, even if we don't feel it. The point there is you know that you have it. So, so therefore act now, contrary to your feelings and the, your, and the desire, and act in accordance with the beetle of your Pnibia Sanashama, which is Mr. Nefesh, which is the Avara. Continuing 